the Honourable Member for Kildonan and St. Paul. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I am pleased to rise today and speak on Bill uh, C-36. As my Honourable Members know, uh, this bill is the first of its kind in Canada. It is the Protection of Communities and Exploited Persons Act. It's historic. For the first time in Canada's history, the buying, the buying of sexual services will be illegal. For the first time, prostituted trafficked women will not be treated as nuisances, but treated with dignity. For the first time, the Government of Canada will provide robust funding to help women and youth escape prostitution and their traffickers. I want to begin by addressing one of the key myths that is being spread by the pro-legalization lobby. What Canadians have been told over the past week is that in the newspapers and on media is that prostitution is a legitimate occupation for women and that it is entirely separate from sex trafficking and exploitation. Mr. Speaker, this is a lie. Prostitution exploits women, youth, and vulnerable populations. It escalates gender inequalities by turning women's bodies into a commodity to be bought, sold, rented, and exploited by men. In short, prostitution provides an avenue for abuse and violence. Research of prostitution in Canada and abroad reveals that women in prostitution, whether by coercion or by choice, experience alarming levels of violence and abuse. One of the clearest links between prostitution and human trafficking is found in a recent empiric empirical analysis of human trafficking trends in over 150 countries. Researchers at the University of Got uh, Göttingen Des Department of Economics found that legalizing prostitution on average increases human trafficking inflows. The inseparable link between prostitution and sex trafficking has been recognized and adopted across political lines in Canada. In 2007, report of the Standing, women on sta uh, the Standing Committee on Status of Women, turning outrage into action, of which I was the vice chair, uh, Mr. Speaker, adopted this position. Like the majority of witnesses appearing before us, and this is quotes, we came to the conclusion that prostitution is closely linked to trafficking in persons. That's our own parliamentary report. We believe that prostitution is a form of violence and a violation of human rights. The committee feels that the prostitute's consent is irrelevant because you never consent to sexual exploitation. This position was supported by the members of the Conservative, Liberal and NDP parties who sat on that committee. The member for London Franshaw, the member for York West and the member for Ahansik all sat on that committee with me and will remember the compelling evidence we heard from survivors. Let me be clear. Prostitution is the avenue or means for pimps and traffickers to sell women and youth. You can't separate this fact, and you can't separate prostitution from sex trafficking. Prostitution is the means for sex traffickers to profit off the exploitation and abuse of others by pimps. If Canada wants to seriously reduce sex trafficking, we must target those who drive prostitution through demand, the Johns, and we must target those who profit and facilitate the pimps. That is why Bill C-36 makes buying sex illegal for the first time and significantly strengthens provisions against pimps and traffickers. It has been appalling to hear from pro-legalization lobbyists over the past week that criminalizing the demand will make things more unsafe for women in prostitution and will have devastating consequences. This argument is absolutely absurd. One study that interviewed 100 prostitutes in Vancouver found that violence is the norm for women in prostitution. Sexual harassment, verbal abuse, stalking, rape, battering and torture are the points on a continuum of violence, all of which occur regularly in prostitution. This violence is perpetrated by Johns and pimps. Let's be realistic. When looking to buy sex, a John is not concerned whether the prostitute is free, underage, or trafficked, nor is he going to ask. In his mind, he wants to buy sex because he's been taught. It is acceptable to buy people to be used at his disposal. That's why we want to target Johns. And there's been a paradigm shift that is so important in this country. Canada's approach 
must recognize the prostitution and not just violence, but itself is a form of violence. For over a century, the violence and exploitation of women and youth in prostitution has been ignored. The historical approach to prostitution in our great country has never recognized the harms of prostitution, but focused only on hiding it from public view by incorporating offenses based on the nuisance of prostitution in the criminal code. Regarded as public nuisances, prostituted, uh, prostituted individuals were arrested and criminalized at much higher rates than the men creating the demand for commercial sex. This profoundly misguided approach to prostitution and the treatment of prostitutes changed in this month on June 4th, 2014. This shift in the approach to prostitution is clearly evident in the preamble of Bill C-36, which states, and I quote, Parliament of Canada recognizes the social harm caused by the objectification of the human body and the commodification of sexual activity. The preamble also highlights the goals of the new legislation to, number one, protect human dignity and the equality of all Canadians by discouraging prostitution, which has a disproportionate impact on women and children. The average age of entry into prostitution in this country is between 14 to 16 years of age. These are children. Third, secondly, the preamble denounces and prohibits the purchase of sexual services because it creates a demand for prostitution. Thirdly, the preamble encourages those who engage in prostitution to report incidents of violence and to leave prostitution. Another indicator of this fundamental paradigm shift is in the location of the new offenses in our criminal code. Previously, before this bill, all prostitution-related offenses were located in part seven of the criminal code under disorderly houses, gaming, and betting. Can you imagine that? The new offenses targeting the purchases of sexual services and pimps will now be located in Part 8 of the Criminal Code, Offenses Against the Person and Reputation. This is a distinct acknowledgement that the act of buying sexual services is an offense against an individual. It is an offense against the most vulnerable individuals in our society who are enslaved by a violent pimp, poverty, or drug addiction. It is for this reason that this new approach will be supported by $20 million in new funding, including support for grassroots organizations that help individuals exit prostitution. It is essential that with new legislation, we are providing support to organizations that help women escape prostitution from all circumstances. Mr. Speaker, as a nation, we are at a crossroads in this country at this moment. But this is not an experiment where we can play with the lives and freedoms of future generations. The other option for Canada is to legalize or fully decriminalize prostitution. This approach will also lead Canada in a fundamental paradigm shift to regulate prostitution like any other industry. It is an appalling shift that would have a severe negative impact on women and youth. And yet, I'm shocked that legislation has been advocated by prominent members of the NDP front bench and adopted as a, a party policy, and also from the, what I'm listening to this morning from the Liberals. Legalization has been adopted as an official party policy by the Green Party of Canada to the dismay of many of their members. On a blog post on the official website of the Green Party, Green Party blogger Steve May offers the following critique of this Green Party policy. And I quote, I believe it is the wrong policy for our party at any time, but especially at this time when so many voices like Victor Mallory's are now just starting to be heard above the fiasco which sex trade legalization has caused elsewhere in the world. Mr. Speaker, we don't have to wait 10 to 20 years to see how legalization of prostitution works out. We only have to look to countries that legalized prostitution 10 to 15 years ago. Let's look at Germany where prostitution has been fully legalized and regulated as an industry since 2001. The deputy chairman of the German Police Association stated that the politicians have shot themselves in the foot by implementing the legalized prostitution law. Even though it was well intended, it only strengthens the criminals." End of quote. Some prosecutors have admitted also from Germany that it's made their work in prosecuting trafficking in human persons more difficult. 
Also in 2013, Germany's leading online paper, Der Spiel, in interviewed a retired detective who stated, and I quote, Germany has become a center for sexual abuse for young women from Eastern Europe and a playground for organized criminals from all over the world. German police and women's groups now view legalization as little more than a subsidy program for pimps and makes the market more attractive to human traffickers. Today, there are over 400,000 prostitutes filling brothels located along the borders of that country. Brothels, brothels openly advertise, sex with all women as long as you want, as often as you want, any way that you want. Sex, oral sex, oral sex without a condom, three ways, group sex, gang bangs. This is what this produced. Women reduced to a sexual commodity to be used by sex buyers and disposed of when they're done. This is the future that the official opposition, along with the Green Party, are proposing for Canadian women and youth. Let's look at another implication of the policies of the NDP and the Green Parties. And now we've heard from the Liberal Party as well. With prostitution legalized and treated as an industry, women will be expected to apply for all job openings before being eligible for EI. So your daughter and their daughters, who have just been laid off, will be expected to apply at the local, uh, to apply at the local brothel before being eligible for e EI if we legalize this stuff. That's not the future I want for my daughters, and I know it's not the future that Canadian parents want for their children. We should also look at the New Zealand model that's been brought up all the time. It's often cited by the pro-legalization lobby as a perfect example of decriminalization. However, this is far from the reality of the facts. The National Council of Women in New Zealand stated, and I quote, the only winners from the Prostitution Reform Act 2003 are men. It was further noted that they are still seeing girls as young as 13 and 14 on the streets selling their bodies. They also said from New Zealand that research has found that human trafficking in children had increased since 2003, especially in ethnic minority groups. Over 10 years after the decriminalization, New Zealand's Aboriginal populations were still significant, significantly overrepresented and amongst the most vulnerable in street prostitution. We know this is also true for Canadian Aboriginals, and this will only increase under legalization. In 2012, the Prime Minister of New Zealand stated that he didn't think the Act had achieved a reduction in street and underage prostitution at all. A shift toward the legalization and normalization of prostitution in Canada is advocated by prominent NDP members and the Green Party will be, and this would be disastrous, disastrous for women's equality and our Aboriginal uh, populations and other populations. It would turn back the clock for women's, uh, the clock about women's equality for years. Mr. Speaker, when Bill C-36 was tabled a week ago in this House, I was stunned to see how many journalists became constitutional legal experts overnight, and they seemed interested in speaking to the well-paid representatives of the pro-legalization lobby who decried this bill as the worst thing that could ever happen to women in prostitution. Don't kid yourself. There is huge profits made by a few people in prostitution, and the adult industry stands to lose much income. Yet the media largely ignored the frontline agencies that actually work with women in prostitution, the families of victims, and most importantly, survivors themselves. So I want to share their voices and experience with you. Katrina McLeod, a survivor, says, as an ex-prostitute who spent 15 years being raped and degraded daily, I had no one to turn to, and there were no resources. Prostitution damages your mind and body. This is why I'm in total support of Bill C-36, which offers these women an exit strategy. Or the daughter, the daughter of a prostituted woman. This is the child of a prostituted woman. I was very re relieved to hear that Bill C-36 is going to be implemented. I am glad our voices are being heard. My mother was a prostitute, and I want no woman or her children to have to experience that damage. I am in agreement with Bill C-36, since it will be getting at the root of this issue, which is the people who purchase sex, as well as providing help for the women to exit this lifestyle, which is very necessary. This is from the parents of a young woman now, who was brutally beaten by her pimp and later found murdered, who wrote to the Minister of Justice saying, and I quote, it is our belief and our experience that tells us that, that if buying sex and selling others for sex was illegal, our daughter would still be alive and would be living a fulfilling and a satisfying life. We strongly urge you to use this opportunity to enact new laws that would severely penalize those who buy sex, the Johns, and sell others for sex, the pimps. Please act to protect the vulnerable and stop the exploitation of violence against young women and girls. Mr. Speaker, 
I want to note that frontline agencies and women's groups have raised a concern about the clause that prohibits the selling of sex around public places where youth can be found, like schools and community centres. Some have said that the intent of this clause is focused on preventing youth from being solicited by Johns, and this is a very good thing. However, frontline agencies, who I must emphasize, are strongly supportive of everything else in this bill and are concerned about unintended consequences that the clause could have on vulnerable women in prostitution. I think that these are valid concerns and I hope that they will bring these concerns and suggestions forward when Bill C-36 is studied at committee. Mr. Speaker, it is my hope that Bill C-36 will be supported by members on all sides of the House. Having spoke to many of the MPs privately, I know support for this approach proposed in Bill C-36 does indeed cross party lines. There's many good people on all sides of this House that are supporting this bill. As parliamentarians, we share a collective desire that Canada has to be a leader in the international community on human rights. Proponents of legalized prostitution claim that it is only the option for a progressive society. I disagree. A truly progressive society encourages the equality and dignity of women, not the prostitution of women. I want to build a Canada that targets predators and pimps, helps vulnerable individuals escape prostitution, and upholds the dignity of women. We can do better for women and youth, and we must. And Mr. Speaker, how much more time do I have left? In that time, you know, we've always heard about the Bedford case and you hear uh, voices across the way saying, oh, it's going to have a constitution challenge. And well, I, must be, I must remind them that actually it was the Supreme Court that sent it to Parliament to build something new. So let me just quote that. And this is what the Supreme Court said. It would be for Parliament, should it choose to do so, to devise a new approach, reflecting different elements of the existing regime. So the, the Supreme Court of Canada did something very wise. Instead of bringing down uh, the law and saying this is the law, they allowed a year, 12 months, for Parliament to reflect. And I have to say, there are thousands of people watching these speeches today. There are thousands of people that are listening to individual MPs and what they are saying. 31,000 responses came. In my office today, I have postcards I haven't even talked about. 36,000 uh, petitions, uh, uh, signatures on petitions. Over 50,000 signatures on postcards. This is Canada. I don't know all these people. Since this bill was tabled, I've, I've worked with sex workers and traffic victims for a very long time. Since this bill was tabled, I've had a whole myriad of emails. There's so many people that want to come to the committee supporting Bill C-36, talking about maybe some little tweaks that we could do better. But the, the country is listening to this. The country is listening to the fact that here in Canada, members on all sides of the House have to make sure that we target the Johns make sure without a doubt that we give programs and exit systems for the prostitute and traffic victims because behind the scenes the story that doesn't get out is about the bullying, is about the, the terrible threats, is about the coercion that happens. I had one 16 year old girl her boyfriend paid for a lot of things for her and then said you owe me four thousand dollars and you have to service Glenn in the next room. He was a trafficker she wasn't going to do it. She said, you're my boyfriend. I don't have to do that. He said, yes, you do. I know where your sister goes, goes to school. I know where she, uh, she does her sports field, uh, her sports activities. We will get her if you don't do this. And you know what? That 16-year-old did it. And she came out. She's out of the trafficking ring now, and she's speaking out. We have these voices all across this country. This parliament has to be responsible and support Bill C-36. Oh, Merci, Monsieur le Président. Merci à la députée pour son, son discours passionné. J'en attendais pas moins. Euh, quiconque la connaît ou a pu euh, la voir en action au comité, 
euh, de la justice sur son projet de loi privé euh, connaît sa passion pour la, 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 la question de la traite des personnes. Euh, là, je la vois sous un autre jour aussi au niveau de, du dossier de la prostitution et des suites à donner à l'arrêt Bedford. Euh, je ferai valoir mes, mes arguments un petit peu plus tard, mais la question que je me posais, parce qu'elle a commencé beaucoup euh, en nous parlant euh, de, euh, de traiter les victimes avec euh, dignité, euh, et la question qui m'est venue à l'esprit, parce qu'elle euh, n'en a pas glissé un seul mot, c'est, euh, puis je vais la dire en anglais pour qu'elle elle apprenne tout de suite, euh, c'est « How does Section 15 amount to treating the prostitutes with dignity? I'm curious to know her opinion on that matter. And being such a proponent of, of, of the Nordic model, everybody who are proponent of the Nordic model said that you need it. You can't just have the Nordic model criminalize the, the Johns, the, the buyer, without putting substantial <laughs> amounts of money to get the, the prostitute out from, from the business. And how can she look at me seriously and say that $20 million for a country like ours with a problem that is that big is enough money? I think it's laughable, and I think all the people who support, who would support the bill, are in shock with that. The Honorable Member for Caldona and St. Paul. Well, uh, Mr. Speaker, it's easy to look at her because I'm very proud, and this is not the Nordic model, it's the Made in Canada model. And it is so good because it looks at that $20 million, my goodness, you know how big Canada is, how big the United States is? When the United States did this, they, they first put in $10 million. We put right off the bat. $20 million in. It's a wonderful first step. I am proud of it. And I will look at anybody in the, in the eye because the paradigm shift has changed. We now look at the survivors, the victims of human trafficking. We now look at them, and we look at them with dignity and compassion. And that's what this government has done, showed the compassion, and we also targeted the Johns. They don't get scot-free. They don't get off scot-free anymore. Uh, questions and comments? The Honourable Member for Charlottetown. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and I uh, thank the member from Kildonan uh, St. Paul for her speech. Um, and there are actually uh, more than a few things in it that we could agree with. Uh, the, the Liberal Party is, uh, is in support of the measures that are contained in the bill that uh, govern human trafficking, and if they could be hived off, uh, that, they, that would be something that we could support. What we don't support is the, is the potential constitutional problems, but the member spent much of her speech uh, talking about the, uh, the, the awful situation that there is in, in countries that have uh, legalized or decriminalized prostitution, uh, such as Germany. Um, and given the options that were available to the government, uh, one that she spoke passionately against, legalization or decriminalization, and the other that they've chosen, which is really the, the approach that they use in Russia with a few tweaks, a prohibitionist model, would she not agree that there were other options in the middle that would be closer to what the Supreme Court of Canada directed and that would more properly and more adequately uh, protect those that are vulnerable? The Honourable Member for Cadot and St. Paul. Well, thank you for your question, but I think it's a little misguided. Actually, as the Supreme Court said, and I quote, it will be for Parliament, should it choose to do so, to devise a new approach, a made in Canada approach, reflecting different elements of the existing regime. I have talked about many different countries. We live in the best country in the world, the true north, strong and free, right here in Canada. And what, what uh, this government has done, Minister McKay has done, has put for, uh, sorry, I shouldn't say a word. Um, what our government has done, I shouldn't name somebody, I'm sorry, Mr. Speaker, but the fact of the matter is it has the right balance. The right balance is targeting the Johns. The right balance is a compassionate view for the horrific, it's the acknowledgement of what has happened to the victims and survivors and the $20 million, which is a great first step to make it happen. Have questions and comments? The Honourable Minister of Public Safety. 
Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And I feel a privilege to ask a member of Kildon and uh, St. Paul, who is a model and a, a source of inspiration for our government in their fight for human trafficking and also the victims of prostitution. Mr. Speaker, I want to commend again the remarkable work of, uh, of our colleague. We're very proud to stand with her in this party. She's been a great source of inspiration. And Mr. Speaker, uh, she's uh, met uh, this morning with people who have been victim of prostitution and have been able to exit. So I would like to hear the, my colleague, the member from, uh, uh, is it important for our government to put in place exit strategy for those victims of, of prostitution? And what is the profile of those individuals? What, what, who is the typical person this bill is aimed uh, at, uh, at supporting and helping? Thank you. Uh, the Honourable Member for Cadone and St. Paul. I thank uh, the Public Safety Minister, uh, I, I thank my colleague, the Public Safety Minister, for this very uh, important question and commend all his great work on this file. I have to say to you that I've met with many traffic victims. The traffic victims are vulnerable, beautiful, young women, and now this last five years, more and more young boys. And what's so important, this money, this uh, this freedom to be able to uh, leave prostitution or the claws of human traffickers and be able to stand up and start a new life because this bill also uh, makes the buying of sex illegal. So now they're not the big bullies anymore. They've been marginalized. This Canada has made a tremendous statement it has said in our country, we will not allow our youth, because our youth does ent do enter prostitution on the average between 14 and 16 years of age, we will not allow our youth and others to be bought and sold. The typical person, there is no typical person. It is the predator who looks at the opportunity to draw them in. Question and comment, Honorable Deputy de Hansik. Monsieur le Président, je voudrais saluer ma collègue pour son discours et aussi pour tout le travail qu'elle a pu faire. Je pense qu'il serait important peut-être d'amener certains éléments. J'écoutais mes collègues de l'opposition et euh, en tout cas, je vous dirais, selon ma prétention à moi, après avoir analysé Bedford et analysé le projet de loi de, du début à la fin, je pense qu'il tiendrait le cap de la constitutionnalité. Et je vais vous dire pourquoi. Ce que Bedford a dit, c'est qu'actuellement, dans le cadre légal que nous avons, où la prostitution est légale, nous ne pouvons pas criminaliser la pratique. Mais lorsque l'on... Mais Bedford nous a dit aussi, aux législateurs, de décider du cadre légal qu'il va mettre en place pour euh, traiter, si vous voulez, du phénomène de la prostitution. Et le gouvernement a choisi de décréter que la prostitution est illégale. Et donc, par ce billet-là, le gouvernement est en droit de criminaliser certains acteurs comme les proxénètes, comme les clients. Et le gouvernement a donné l'immunité, l'immunité aux personnes prostituées. Et je, je pense que cette approche-là est l'approche la plus égalitaire pour le Canada et démontre un modèle canadien, et sur ça, je le leur donne. Là où je ne suis pas en accord, c'est le fait d'avoir criminalisé les personnes prostituées sur la place publique. Parce que lorsqu'on adopte l'immunité, l'immunité doit se faire partout, que ce soit dans les salons de massage, que ce soit sur la place publique. Moi, j'amènerais le gouvernement peut-être à revoir cette position, parce qu'en criminalisant les clients sur la place publique, c'est assez. En criminalisant les proxénètes sur la place publique, c'est assez. Il ne faut pas criminaliser les personnes prostituées sur la place publique. C'est comme ça que nous allons pouvoir donner à ces femmes-là, qui sont les plus vulnérables sur la rue, la possibilité même de dénoncer leurs agresseurs. Alors j'amène un amendement euh, en toute euh, convivialité. Uh, the Honourable Member for Condon and St. Paul. Uh, you know, I really thank my colleague across the way for her support of the bill and for her very good comments. You know, this bill has such a really good balance because our children, I was a school teacher for 23 years, and the children from the schools, we had people have to report to the office when they came in. We had pedophiles outside the fence who would lure the older girls. And now what we're doing is we're protecting the children too, because it's not so much 
the prostitutes, but this is a John's. The John's not only solicit the prostitutes or the trafficked women, they also, if they see an attractive girl, they will go after them as well. So it's a nice balance. Every other place, I mean, uh, there is no uh, arresting of the prostitutes, but that's something that we need to hammer out uh, at committee and, and bring it to committee to have those concerns come forward as well.